Good morning. Welcome to everyone here in church. And I know we've got a number of visitors here today. So please come through if you can for coffee after the service. And it would be nice to share fellowship with you. Welcome to those joining in church and online. And we hope you enjoy our worship today. All our hymns and our readings are on the screens. And yesterday was the 30th of July. It was a significant birthday for a lady in the congregation. And I checked that she was okay about me mentioning this. Margaret, happy birthday from yesterday. Are we allowed to say that it had an eight in it and a zero in it? Because <laughs> it did. And we celebrate by singing happy birthday to Margaret. call to worship our words from 2 Timothy verse 16. These special words. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's pray together. Loving God, thank you for being in our lives, for loving us, for caring for us, for being with us, especially when we feel alone at times. Thank you for guiding us when we don't know what to do. Thank you for giving us friends and family, for showing us how to love and to share and for telling us all about your good news. This prayer we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to be thinking about what it's like to be a servant today in our worship. And we stand and sing first our first hymn, CH4577, Larbert East Praise 22. Christ be beside me. Let's stand.
Please be seated. Now, can we have the next slide, please, Sid? Thank you. Now, will you come round, Olivia, and help me with the mic again? That's great. Thank you for doing that. Did you switch on? Excellent. Are we on, Sid? Excellent. Thanks, Olivia. Are we on? Just say hello. Hello. Good. Excellent. My roving reporter here. So, you're going to help me again this morning, and we'll get other folk to help over these coming weeks. What do we see in the pictures? Any thoughts? Anybody want to put their hand up and say what they see, please? Go for it. A bus stop. Bus stop? Good. What do you see in the bus stop, though? Pardon? Lining up. Good. Thank you. Any other pictures that we recognize? No? Too shy when the microphone comes around. What about the top right? Anybody in that queue ever? At school? No? What do you see? No? Nobody wants to say? Aaron, do you want to say? No? Anybody want to say? What do we see? School dinners. Anybody have school dinners here? No? You'll all bring me packed lunches. Right? Anybody have packed lunch, uh, school dinners at school? Yeah, lots of us. Were they good? Yeah? The custard? Do you have school dinners, Olivia? You do, you do. Are they good? Yes, good. What else can you say? We've got a few teachers here <laughs> in our midst. Um, okay, moving down. So school, a queue at a bus stop. A queue at the bus stop. School dinners, queuing up. There's a theme here. What do we see bottom left? What do we see? Do you ever join that queue? An ice cream van. An ice cream van. Do you ever join that queue? Uh, sometimes. Does the ice cream van go around where you live? I guess. Yeah? yeah? Anybody join a queue at an ice cream van? No. Nobody go to the ice cream van. You do. Yeah. Lots of people do, yeah? Olivia, you do. You do as well. Good. Ice cream van. Okay. One more here. And what was that one? I've forgotten which one that was, actually. Yes. Anybody join this kind of queue? What is it? What do you see? Sometimes on a Friday, Saturday, or maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as well. I think that was supposed to be a fish and chip shop. Maybe it wasn't, actually. That was what I was aiming for. Anybody queue up at the chip shop? Yes, lots of people. Yeah? Do you like being in queues? No. Why, why don't you like being in queues? They're long. Yeah, that's right. Anybody else want to offer an answer? Yeah. Somebody up there? Want to go around, please? Why don't you like being in a queue, Nina? I don't like waiting. You don't like waiting. Right. Do you ever push ahead and get to the front of the queue? No, no, I, I, I don't think folk in Labour East would do that, you know. <laughs> queues, what else? I want to stimulate these thoughts. What else don't we like about queues? We don't like waiting. What else? Is it too early to ask these questions on a Sunday morning? Any offers? Why don't we like waiting in queues? Anybody else? A hand? Yep, a bit of exercise. We want to hear you. Do you want to go up there? Thank you. It's a bit like question time, isn't it? A wee bit further along. Well done. Excellent. Standing makes your legs ache. Standing makes your legs ache. Mmm, interesting. Standing, waiting. We don't like being in queues, do we, if we're honest? Next slide, please. 
Who do we see, what do we see in this picture? Any thoughts? We see people, some people having a meal. What about the gentleman who's got a tray like this? What is he doing? What do we see? Any thoughts? No? Somebody else. Third pew. Fourth pew. It's a waiter. It's a waiter, yes. Do we like being waited on? Do our parents and grandparents wait on us? Do we click our fingers sometimes and say, I'm hungry? No? No. Lots of no's. Do we ever get told we've got to go to our bed and bring me up a drink or... No? You never... No. What a good lot. Do you ever do that? No. 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 There's a laughter over there. Okay. Serving other people. Sometimes it's tricky, isn't it? When we expect people, we want to be front of the queue. We want, oh, you've got an answer, right? All right. Sometimes we want to push ourselves at the front of the queue, don't we? But sometimes it's nicer to let other people go first, isn't it? No? Is that hard sometimes? Yeah? No? No. Are we always polite? Do you always let other people go first through a door? Or at the front of the chip shop queue? Or at the bus stop? Please, do you want to go first? Sometimes we push ourselves to the front, don't we? No? Maybe not. Maybe not. The gentleman here is serving other people. It's a real privilege as well to serve, isn't it? I feel that. And we have a lot of people in this church week by week, month by month, year by year, who serve us in different ways. And there's a scripture from the Bible, and it comes from the Gospels, and it says this, the first will be last, and the last will be first. Sometimes we've got to remember that it's important for other people to be first in that queue, and that we can stand back and serve you want to say something? Yeah? Oh, we've gone shy again. We've gone shy. Serving. And I know that's something that Evelyn and the team are going to be talking about through in the hall for your activities shortly. Good. To serve. You're not going to do that. No. Right. Well, I think you are. I think you are. Okay. Let's sing next, please. Serving. Serving is important. Not always being first. Olivia, thank you. And you know how to switch it off for me. Excellent. I'll take it. We're going to stand and sing our next hymn, which is God's People. Aren't super brave superheroes? Let's stand and sing. Laba East Praise number. 46.
Thank you. Let us now just pause and be still as we pray together. Living God, we gather for worship today as the crowds gathered around Jesus wherever he went, on the hillside, on the plains, in the streets and marking places of the towns. Our reasons for being here and at home are as many and as varied as were theirs. Father God, you come alongside us this day and make us promises. The kind of promises that touch our very being, that offer us hope and renewal in our lives. Glad we are because you have given us strength and hope. Surprised we are because this is your idea and not ours. Relieved we are because we see grace sufficient for all that we encounter. Loving God, forgive us that so easily we lose sight of that message of love. We want to be first in the queue, forgetting the needs of others. Forgive us that at times our expectations have been small, tied down by our narrow vision, our self-serving attitudes. Failing at times to believe you can transform our lives and the world. Teach us to follow you. Father God, in the peace of this place and in our homes, meet us, we pray. Remind us of your promises. And may we live this day in the joy you bring. May we f listen for your word and follow you in every way. May we worship you with all that is within us. And may we serve you as you deserve. And let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, will you cover us with a bit of music as you can go out for your activities? Thank you for taking part. We're going this way. Thank you. Lots still going on in the summer period. The details are outlined in our order of service and intimation list there. So many things that I could hi highlight, but I would encourage you to read and take them away. One thing I will mention is number five because that deadline comes around very quickly. Eastwood's deadline for the September circulation the deadline is actually next Sunday, which is the 7th of August. Um, email address on the back page and details to Marion for next Sunday. There will be lots of stuff that I'm sure you'll want to put in our magazine, which goes around the parish. And it would be really good if folk offered some thoughts, some reflections, something maybe that you'd like to share with the wider community in Eastwoods. Deadline next Sunday. Let us now just pause and I invite Evan to come up and read our scripture readings today.
Good morning. Today's readings, um, the first reading is from Psalms uh, 134, Psalm 134, and that can be found on page 620 of the Old Testament section of the, the Bible. A call to praise God. Come, praise the Lord, all his servants, all who serve in his temple at night. Raise your hands in prayer in the temple and praise the Lord. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. And the second reading is also from the Old Testament um, and it's from 2 Kings chapter 5 uh, verses 1 to 14 and that can be found on page um, 367 of the, the Pew Bible. This is, uh, so, uh, 1 Kings chapter 5, Naaman is cured. <clears throat> Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army, was highly respected and esteemed by the king of Syria, because through Naaman, the Lord had given victory to the Syrian forces. He was a great soldier, but he suffered from a dreaded skin disease. In one of their raids against Israel, the Syrians had carried off a little Israelite girl who became a servant of Naaman's wife. One day, she said to her mistress, I wish that my master could go to the prophet who lives in Samaria. <clears throat> he would cure him of his disease. When Naaman heard of this, he went to the king and told him what the girl had said. <clears throat> the king said, go to the king of Israel, this is, uh, and take this letter to him. So Naaman set out taking 30,000 pieces of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, and 10 changes of clothing. The letter that he took read, this letter will introduce my officer, Naaman. I want you to cure him of his disease. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and exclaimed, how can this king of Syria expect me to cure this man? Does he think I am God with the power of life and death? It is plain that he's trying to start a quarrel with me. When the prophet Elisha heard what had happened, he sent word to the king of Israel. Why are you so upset? Send the man to me and I'll show him that there is a prophet in Israel. <clears throat> so Naaman went with his horses and chariot and stopped at the entrance to Elisha's house. Elisha sent a servant out to tell him to go and wash himself seven times in the river Jordan and he would be completely cured of his disease. But Naaman left in a rage, saying, I thought that he would at least come out to me, pray to the Lord his God, wave his hand over the diseased spot and cure me. Besides, aren't the rivers Abana and Farfar back in Damascus better than any river, river in Israel? I could have washed in them and been cured. His servants went up to him and said, Sir, if the prophet has told you to do something difficult, you would have done it. Now, why can't you just go wash yourself, as he said, and be cured? So Naaman went down to the river Jordan, dipped himself in it seven times, as Elisha had instructed, and he was completely cured. His flesh became firm and healthy, like that of a child. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. Thanks, Evan. Every week, somebody says to me at the door as we leave church or through in the hall, something along these lines, the hymns were rotten, or could we no sing such and such? Um, 
I thought in the month of September, just giving you a bit of a warning, it would be nice if you chose a hymn, uh, suggested to me uh, a hymn that is special to you, but the deal would be that you'd be prepared to come up and say why it's special. The tune, the words, wedding hymn, baptism hymn, why it touches your heart. So the person who suggested that we sing this hymn, Teach Me Thy Way, Mission Praise 626, didn't want to come up and say why it was special to them. But that's fine. But I would encourage you in the month of September, if there's a special hymn, tell us why. September. Some thoughts, please. Teach me thy way. Let's stand and sing Mission Praise 626. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How many people did know that hymn that we've just sung? Oh, lots and lots of people. Good, good. I had never sung it before, so thank you to the person who suggested it. The knowing servant. In the world of fiction and drama, the role of the servant is a long established one. Where would upstairs, downstairs have been without Hudson and Mrs. Bridges and Rose? Or Downton Abbey be without Carson and Mrs. Hughes and Mrs. Patmore and Daisy, maybe you can think of lots of others. In the Bible, servants are to be found throughout the Old Testament. Looking after Abraham and Sarah, the boy Samuel as a servant in the time before the Jerusalem temple. In the New Testament, servants are found in the parables of Jesus. Faithful and unfaithful. And Paul meets servants on several occasions in the Acts of the Apostles. Because the idea of being a servant 
is also fundamental to our understanding of the ministry of Jesus. From the prophecies of Isaiah, Behold my servant, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. Isaiah 42 verse 1. Who then goes on to suffer in his service. And to Paul's description of Jesus in Philippians 2 verse 5. Taking the form of a servant. Or in John's gospel, chapter 13 verse 4. Where at the time of the Last Supper, before the bread and wine are shared, Jesus rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. One servant is tucked away in our reading that Evan read from 2 Kings, the little Israelite servant girl who has no name. She'd been captured on a raid by Naaman, a great general amongst the Aramean people. The little girl became the maid to Naaman's wife. A slave girl, the ancient world's consummate non-person, no name, no age. In our 20th century parlance, you would say that she was a victim of human trafficking, which maybe puts a whole number of things into perspective. But nevertheless, she is a person. She is a child of God. She is a believer. And through her anonymous life, God speaks a word of extraordinary power and extraordinary comfort. She is the one who delivers the good news, the good news of hope. It is another Bible instance of those to whom society attributes Little intrinsic value. Serving. Serving. As effective heralds of the power and presence of God. The little girl told about a mighty prophet from her land, Elisha, who would have the power through God to bring a cure for Naaman's leprosy. What makes her witness, her service, so effective is that she knows about the Elisha and the reliability of the God in whom, in whose name he prophesies. The maid is one of God's chosen people, a participant in God's bold and risk-laden social project. Naaman has an encounter with Elisha, who tells him to go and wash in the River Jordan. It's not much of a river compared to some of the greater rivers in the area. Naaman initially resists. But this time is persuaded by other servants, goes and washes in the Jordan and is, as we heard, cured. The words from 2 Kings chapter 5, well worth reading again, that Evan read to us, are characterized by irony. The great and the good who should have known better, appear unaware about what to do in the face of difficult and challenging situations. But it is the knowing servants, including the little Israelite maid, marginalized by society, who perceive accurately 
what God is able to do. The little Israelite maid knows about God. And Naaman's servants show their general the weakness of his own reasoning and coax and cajole him into taking the treatment the prophet Elisha recommends. Even the message that Elisha sends to Naaman is carried to the general by another servant, a messenger. The weak, the worthless, the powerless perceive where and how God is at work and are the ones who not only know the good news, but are willing to carry it to others. Of course, the focus of the story is on Naaman, his leprosy, his powerfulness, his arrogance, and then his coming to follow what God wants and his ultimate healing. But I'm struck by all of these servants, none of them named, none of them of high status, but without whom the sick man would not have been made well, and God's purpose for the world would not have been effected. Ordinary people sharing God's story. Because the good news of hope is for everyone. It is carried out to all the world by people with no names who are servants, servants of God. On Thursday evening, the Commonwealth Games opened in Birmingham. It was spectacular. Did anybody else see it? Yeah, lots of people. Malala said in a speech that the Commonwealth Games are a reminder that we are all deserved of a chance to reach our potential and realize our wildest dreams. No matter who we are, whether we are the CEO or serving staff. I wonder how often it is the little people, the ones well down the lists of who are powerful and mighty, who are in reality the people who do so much more to pass on the message of hope and life and healing and love and salvation. The granny whose little gifts of love stay in the memory as an example of what goodness looks like. Grandpa's too, of course. The teacher whose patience and dedication and perseverance demonstrates the necessary results in exams. The home help whose cheery smile and laughter is sometimes the only human contact a housebound older person has all week. The team making and serving our coffee in the church hall, where we are enabled to share friendship and warmth and company. The delivery person who doesn't simply drop off an order on your doorstep but carries it into your home. The friend who notices you're not your usual self and takes the time to ask you if you're all right and if there's anything they can do to help. The colleague who's aware that you're struggling with a huge workload and quietly takes time to ask you how you are the knowing servant. Not doing simply what they have to do, but realizing there is a hurt or a sadness or a 
an overload that they might be able to help and then offers that help. Isn't first in the queue for themselves but reaching out for others. They're not always the source of the help but they are the one who bring help or points to it. Not a grand gesture but the simple action of being there to help. Servanthood is at the heart of what it means to be a Christian. We are here in Larbert East today. One church, one vision across Larbert area. This was a slide that Walter Williamson devised for our Larbert area churches together meetings. We are called to be helpful and to be useful. There are always things that we can do to make a difference for others that may not change a situation forever, but in some way may make a connection, even if only for a moment, and reassure someone somewhere that they are not on their own and that help might come. We are not the ones who will always work the miracle but we can be, we can be the ones through whom God enables good things. Yes, miracles to happen. In Second Kings chapter 5, Naaman is cured of leprosy. The healing happens because a maidservant is strong enough to embrace and make use of the faith traditions of her nation, even when she was enslaved in a foreign land in which she is a cultural and religious outsider. Naaman shows willingness to seek help from a theology and culture that are strange to him and go and immerse himself at Alicia's suggestion in the River Jordan. But the important factor in all of this is God. God works through the servant, the prophet, and the River Jordan for the good of Naaman. God works inside and outside our culture and tradition, using extraordinary, but more often, not the ordinary people who are willing to be his servants and tell his story of good news and healing and hope. And I believe that's a wake-up call for all of us who seem to be caught up in looking for the God of the Bible in the same old places or indeed in no place at all. And I wonder if it's a wake-up call for those who do not value the opportunities, the insights of a multicultural world that has to offer right now. But it also leaves us today with this faith question. What kind of servants are we Will we at some point in the course of this new week, in the course of this new month, directly or indirectly, be a help to someone in need or point them in the right direction? I'm sure there will be opportunities for all of us to be that servant this week. Amen. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Labertie's praise number 18, CH4 number 694. Let's stand.
giving God, provider of all that we are and all that we have. We offer these tokens of money laid here and given by other means as a symbol of our commitment to your church, your mission, and your message. Accept them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our prayers of intercession are led by Crawford. Let us pray. Loving God, we take time today to count the many blessings that you provide in so many different ways for us, and we give thanks to you, Lord, the source of all that is good and caring and support. God of justice and mercy, there is so much that is wrong in the world right now. Wars ravaging in many places. Division, persecution, poverty, unrest. Loving God be in the places where there is most need at this time. We pray for those who rule our nation in parliaments and councils. We pray for those who are in charge in public life that they may truly serve and may they carry out their work with sensitivity, honestly and with integrity. We pray for those who serve the life of our communities in ordinary ways, helping in the food bank, supporting our schools and colleges during the summer holiday time, those who are true servants in all that they do. Help us to serve you in our everyday life. We pray for our church here in Labert East. We pray for all our office bearers and all who work tirelessly for this church in so many different ways. Bless them all. We pray for those who are unwell at this time, and we pray for those who are sad, having lost a loved one recently. Help us to trust in you, for you know what it is we need. In silence, Lord, we bring before you our own thoughts and concerns at this time. Grant us your blessing, we pray, as we offer these prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Every week, I'm amazed at all the different changes that there are in and out with our church. Bits and pieces painted, things updated, notice boards replenished. We do thank Cragen and his team for all that they do for us each week, and many others too. Uh, so take a look at the notice boards, the garden areas, and there's so many positive things in and around the church at this time. Thank you to those who do so much. We'll be coming through for our coffee. Looking forward to that shortly. As we close our service by singing Mission Praise number 31, Amazing Grace.
Go and serve the Lord this day. And may you go this day with the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love this day and always. be seated. Thanks for your support as always. Some of you still away on holiday, some joining us online from different places today. Thank you for joining us and have a good day and week ahead. Over to you, Martin. <laughs>